we need to talk about the Marshall Emberton too, because I'm pretty sure I just found the best new portable speaker. Welcome everybody to Apple Insider. It is Andrew here, and I've been using the new Marshall Emberton 2 for a few weeks. Let's go ahead and take a look at it. So yeah, this is it. This is the updated Marshall Emberton 2. And in this video, I'm gonna give you a good review of this covering its sound, design, and other unique features. I'm gonna compare it directly to the previous generation, Marshall Emberton, and we'll wrap it up by talking about the smart controls using the Marshall Connect app. So let's go ahead and dive into this with the design of the Marshall Emberton 2. The Marshall Emberton 2 has a rock solid design, and I am not mad in the slightest that very little of the design changed from the first generation unit. Inside, you'll find dual two inch full range drivers, as well as two passive radiators that are usually used in smaller compact speakers where there's not room for a full vent system that can help out on the low range. Apple actually uses this in the HomePod mini. On the front, you'll find this really nice all metal grill, as well as that Marshall word mark in script right there on the front, so iconic of all of Marshall's speakers. On top, you're gonna have a few different controls. On the far left is your Bluetooth button. You're gonna use this for the new stack mode, more on that in a minute, as well as pairing to a new device. In the center is this brass multi-purpose button. So it's kind of like a joystick. You can press it down to play or pause your music. You can move it left or right to skip backwards or forward in your track list and move it up and down to adjust the volume. This is a fantastic button. They always use these gold brass uh, controls on all of their speakers, and I'm very glad they do because it's awesome. It feels great. It's tactile. It's protected by being flush with the outside. It's an amazing button, and more speaker companies need to use these physical metal buttons like this because it's just so perfect. Then on the far right, you have this battery indicator. It looks kind of like a sound bar that's moving up and down with the music, but it's actually representing the battery life. So in my case, I've got three bars, which is representing 30% of my battery life. Compared to other speakers that maybe have four little dots on there, this is much more emblematic of what you're actually getting in terms of battery because it's much more granular uh, with all those little dots going up. Much, much, much better than most of them out there and it has a really nice animation as you turn it on where they kind of glow up it's very cool. I love the battery indicator on this thing. It's nice and solid built in. This thing is super durable. There's like a silicone material on the outside. In this newer version, it's been updated with more of a pebbled texture that looks reminiscent of Marshall's actual amps and onstage speakers. It looks like that much more now than it did in the past, which had more of a smooth coating to it. This is more on brand with the Marshall style. I like the changes to the exterior of this. Plus, it's also made from 50% post-consumer recycled materials, things like old electronics or plastic bottles. So I like that it's more eco-friendly as well as still rugged and durable. And it has an IP67 rating, which is preventing dust as well as water from getting in here. You can actually drop this thing in a meter of water and leave it underwater for up to 30 minutes and it's still going to rock on. This thing is an exceptionally durable speaker that you can easily take with you anywhere. Since I didn't mention it when we were talking about the controls, battery life. This thing has a 30 hour battery life, depending on your volume. I think of getting pretty close to that, listening at about half the range of the volume. When it's inside, you can't turn this up any louder because it gets pretty darn loud. So about 30 hours or so on battery life. For power, it charges up over USB-C. Super handy because again, you can use any USB-C charger that supports power delivery. So anyone that you're using for your Mac, your iPad, all of those can plug directly into here and charge it up. Even a power bank if you have one with you. Now let's compare the last generation Marshall Emberton with the new Marshall Emberton 2. There are a few notable changes here that I wanna make sure we cover. First is the durability. Marshall did increase the durability here. It had an IPX7 rating and now has an IP67 rating. That X that has turned into a six, that is the dust resistance. So this one, the last generation, did not promise to protect against the ingress of dust, but now it will on the updated model. That's gonna be great if you plan on taking this thing anywhere where there's gonna be a lot of dust or small particles like the beach. 
Another change is that exterior material. Not only is it now that recycled material, but you can see it has more of that pebble texture when we're side by side. I absolutely like the new look a bit better. Then we have the upgrade from Bluetooth 5 to Bluetooth 5.1. If you have a Bluetooth 5.1 device, you should see better connectivity here. There was a couple times I had some dropouts with that last generation device, but overall it was very solid. Moving to Bluetooth 5.1 should only be better for updated devices. Then there's the battery life. The battery life is now 50% more. The last generation unit would only last about 20 hours. Now it's 50% more at the 30 that I've already mentioned. The biggest difference though is a feature called stack mode. And this is pretty sweet. So you've got your Marshall Emberton 2 and your friend also has a Marshall Emberton 2. You can bring them together, stack them on top of one another to double your sound output. Basically, you triple tap the button on the main one and double tap that Bluetooth button on your second one. And you bring them together and boom, you're in stack mode. They will sync together as many of these as you want. Stack them up like you're looking at a Marshall amp and multiply that volume, that audio output. It's a really, really neat feature that I love but it just depends on if you have multiple of these around. If you're just buying one for yourself, this may be a cool feature that you're never gonna use. But if any of your friends also buy these, you guys can come together for a party, stack them together, and multiply that output really easily. It's an awesome feature that I think is super unique, and I'm very excited they built, built it in to the new Marshall Emberton 2. Sound-wise though, not too much changed. It sounds pretty darn similar to that first generation version. I might be able to tell a difference, but I can't tell if I'm just thinking there is because it's an updated device. What is nice that you can connect this to the Marshall app and control the EQ there, but we're gonna come back to the app in just a few minutes. So how is the audio quality on the Marshall Emberton 2? I really like the sound quality here. I mean, as soon as you turn this thing on and start playing music, it sounds like a Marshall speaker. There's that kind of iconic Marshall sound that you pick up after listening to enough of these things. And for some people, like me, it's a reason to choose these speakers over a lot of the other ones that are out there on the market. I just love that kind of raw, crisp, rocky sound that comes out of this. Is it perfect? Is it you know super clean like a Sono speaker? No, I wouldn't put it in there. It is definitely a stylized sound that comes out of this thing. And now, it, while it's better tuned for rock and instrumental and acoustic tracks, it doesn't mean it's bad with anything else. I mean, I'm listening to pop and rap and R&B and all this stuff, and it all sounds good. And you can even get into the app and adjust the EQ to better tune it to the music that you're listening to. But personally, that Marshall style is what I like here. And there's some really neat stuff. There's not too much bass. It is more bass than the smaller Willen speaker, but there is good bass here, but not a huge amount of bass. Listening to something like the world's smallest violin, you can hear the timpanis just throughout this song and everything is clear, but it seems to give a better emphasis on the vocals and even the mids and highs than just pushing out a whole bunch of bass. It just didn't do it for me in terms of like shake your room bass, even with the volume all the way up. But I appreciate that it's giving that importance to the instruments and the vocals more than anything else. Especially when you're listening to that world's smallest violin, they have those really cool instrumental breaks and they're kind of changing instruments, going from uh, a xylophone to a guitar to actual vocals in these breaks as they're going through like the tiny symphony that they're singing about. And it, it just brings that out so much and I, I like it. I like it a lot. This thing sounds pretty darn awesome. If you need more bass, you're just gonna have to go up to a bigger speaker because there's only so much bass you can do in tiny footprint. For its size, this sounds great with perfectly adequate bass. Let's talk about smart functionality with the Marshall Connect app. Once you pair this to your phone, you can jump into the Marshall Connect app that's free to download from the App Store and view your speaker. There you can do things like perform firmware updates as changes come out to help improve it. And you can adjust the EQs that I've mentioned 30 times already. In the EQs, you can choose between boosting things like the bass and the treble. You can choose the vocals one that gives you more spoken word stuff or just stick with the iconic Marshall sound. Personally, I stuck with the Marshall one. When I switch it to the one that boosts the treble and the bass, to me, it sounds almost like muddled a little bit. When you're on that, that standard one, the Marshall one, 
it sounds like you can hear them just like talking into the mic as they're singing and they're right in front of you. But as soon as you that, it, it, it tightened up the soundstage a little bit, though it did give a little bit more bass. It, it really just wasn't for me. But I like that you do have the option to tune these things if you so choose. One thing that might have been nice inside of the Marshall app is full control over the EQ. Some of the Marshall's bigger speakers give you absolute control over the treble and the bass and you can tune them in with dials. While I don't expect there to be dials on the portable speaker, with the App Connect version, I kind of would like to see them being able to bring those dials there. Then again, I probably would just stick with the Marshall sound, just the default, but for people who do want to get in there and tinker and change things, it could have been a nice addition. Now look, I'm not saying this speaker is going to be for everyone, but for me, this is perfect. It has 360 degree sound with speakers on the front and the back, very tactile controls, this awesome retro design, and it sounds amazing. Plus, great battery life with 30 hours and stack mode if you have multiple these or combine them with your friends. There's a lot of cool stuff here. It may be missing out on things like speaker phone mode, but I don't care about that. I'd rather strap on some headphones than talking through this as a speaker phone. There are other devices for that and I don't need it to be my portable speaker that I'm bringing with me. I really do like the Marshall Willen that's coming out too. It's very small and has a strap on the back. It's a cool device, but this is just a perfect sweet spot for me. I could almost fit it in like back pocket, easily toss in a backpack. It's got a little bit of a weight to it, but between the base and the extended battery life, I think it's worth it. Let me know what you guys think. Do you guys like the new Marshall Emberton 2? Do you like the upgrades? Let me know in the comments or on Twitter at Andrew underscore OSU. If you'd like to grab this guy, there is a link in the two colorways down below in the description. Otherwise, I'll catch you in the next video.